Bobby Patrick, who is the CMO of UiPath, the fastest growing and leading provider of robotic process automation AI and AI software worldwide. In, his, in this role, he leads global marketing strategy and execution as UiPath continues to usher in the automa automation first era, helping businesses of all sizes digitize business operations and apply AI to drive true digital transformation. A technologist at heart, Patrick has driven significant growth in technology businesses for over two decades, ranging from Fortune 50 to startups. Bobby, it's a real pleasure and honor to have you in the in the in the webcast. Thank you, Jose. I appreciate that uh, very much. And I want to just uh, share my screen. I apologize to everyone here. I'm, unfortunately, my Mac updated uh, the latest version, and it's not compatible with the video. Uh, feature of GoToWebinar right now, the latest. So I am um, unable to show my video, which uh, is you know frustrating. And we're so used to that in COVID times. But I'll um, I'm happy to be here today. Thank you, Jose, for that great introduction. You know, we had uh, we just had our CEO on CNN uh, live just about uh, an hour ago, and and CNN was talking about RPA. This was CNN International on the First Move uh, show, and you know it's come a long way for RPA and robotic process automation to be a topic that mainstream you know, CNN wants to cover, and I'm I'm still kind of riding high off of off of that. But I'd like to just jump right in here, and and I'm going to play a video for you quickly that I think will uh, will provide a good kind of starting point to discuss UiPath, uh, RPA, and why it's now it's 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 time to aut automate. History is built on turning points, moments when everything changed. Some saw it, most didn't, wouldn't, until later. So what now? Like it or not, this is a turning point in work. Do you stay the course, plug some holes in the dam? Or do you face a radical change with radical change and finally make digital transformation work? Your decision in this moment is one you will talk about in years to come. What story will you tell? We think this moment, like all great moments in human history, demands that we answer the only question worth asking. What are we capable of? With robotic process automation, we are limited only by our imagination, which is why airlines, banks, hospitals, manufacturers, insurance companies, the pharmaceutical industry, retailers, transportation, and governments are automating today. Name the problem, the mundane task, the supply chain issue, the back office challenge, the overloaded customer service rep. This isn't some software upgrade or interface. This is hyper automation, end-to-end -end automation, harnessing the power of multiple technologies, a turbocharged transformation of how you work. This is about how organizations are not only recovering now, but setting them up to thrive in the future. A world where millions of documents can be read and understood in hours. Where companies can improve distribution by identifying the fastest delivery routes. Alternate supply chains can be identified in seconds. Customer service reps can handle more calls more efficiently with greater customer satisfaction where human error is dramatically reduced. And to ensure that if this happens again, businesses keep running, services stay online, companies don't die, and people don't lose their jobs. Because mostly what this is about is people. Not robots replacing humans, but robots empowering humans, giving people the most valuable thing in business, time. Time to think and thrive and thrill to what's possible to grow organizations, to help change the world we now live in and move it forward. This new world knocked us to the mat. It's time to stand up. Your employees are waiting. Your customers are waiting. The world is waiting. History is built on turning points. The time is now. And that was excellent. Uh, so hopefully that gave you a little little bit of a of a nice start to a to a what will be now a series of PowerPoint slides. 
But um, first of all, a little bit about UiPath. It's been an exciting few years. I've been with the company now almost three years. And when I joined, we were, were just moving out of our, uh, moving on to our headquarters in New York City. We were founded in Romania. Uh, the company was not well known and, and the category was not. And since then, we've become the fastest growing enterprise software company in history. I'll give you an example. We grew from a million to a hundred million in annual recurring revenue in about 20 months. Uh, it took four years, uh, by contrast, for Salesforce.com to make that make that level of, of, of growth. Uh, and since then, it's been amazing. It's been great to see over 7,000 customers now, uh, many in the Fortune 500, mid-size, fast-growing, uh, U.S. government agencies, um, uh, all adopting this technology and loving how this technology is helping drive productivity. And actually, it's proving to actually be the best and fastest uh, route to true digital transformation. Um, I'm most proud of the fact that just uh, earlier, a few weeks ago, we were named the CNBC Disruptor 50, which only 200 companies have been named to that over the last seven years. And so of all the, the accolades that are on this chart, I think that one is the one that I'm I'm uh, most, most proud of. The company has long had a vision uh, for of a robot for every person. Uh, this is the idea that you have things that you do every day that are repetitive and mundane, things that you do every day that could require, uh, you know, a, a, an advisor or an assistant to help you make better decisions, um, things that could free your time so you could be more creative, um, more engaged in your work. And, you know, we think this 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 vision is on lo the lines of the vision that Bill Gates first had when in the late 70s when he said that, that uh, PC will be in every home and office. I think a robot for every person has that same that same degree of potential and Certainly the adoption we're seeing so far um, is tremendous. Every employee at UiPath um, has, has many uh, robots and automations that we use. Uh, PwC is rolling it out to all their employees in EY and, and uh, in, in large companies as they see this potential now to help make uh, a worker more productive, make a company and organization more productive, and ultimately this will separate the winners um, and the losers. If our founder was here today, he would say, uh, this great quote that I that I often attribute to him, but uh, once the crisis stabilizes that we're in, executives will need to bring the revenue machine back up as fast as possible. At the same time, they'll need to reimagine, reshape, and reinvent their business in order to create long-term value and resiliency. Automation will play a central role in both stages of the recovery. Look, what's been amazing, like many of you, when 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 COVID really started to become a reality in February and March, none of us knew exactly the impacts on our business, the impacts on 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 uh, the economy and others and the reality has been that COVID has been a, a, a gigantic accelerant of our business um, as companies had very few tools to turn to to actually figure out how to to create you know solve problems and and to go digital and so it's been a, a, a really a fascinating thing to watch uh, during COVID and we're seeing now that basically what COVID has made is automation is now a boardroom a boardroom priority so before COVID, um, we all talked about going digital. Uh, there were many promises on being on, on transferring digitally. Uh, there are a lot of technologies, um, older technologies that uh, require extensive IT and engineering and re, uh, re-platforming. And, and uh, those took a long time. And digital processes were often thought of in transformation in years. But those days are over now. And during COVID, um, and during COVID, let me just skip what Gartner says here, because I think that's all uh, actually old data now. Uh, during COVID, the impact is, was was tremendous, right? So, the ability to respond to cost pressures um, and and focus on preserving revenues, uh, strained resources. We saw this in airlines and uh, and in um, customer service centers uh, that were uh, challenged in being able to respond to customer needs, or in the you know state governments. Before COVID, we really didn't have any state government customers in the U.S. of any scale. Now 12 states have fully deployed. Um, if you're if you're applying for unemployment in New York State, robots are helping make that happen. If you are part of uh, participating in the SNAP program in Georgia, robots are there now helping make that happen. And so the the speed of which people have adopted the technology has accelerated during COVID. And again, what we're seeing now entering in the next the next phase is that driven by a remote workforce, the need to reskill and upskill, driven by the enormous cost pressures. Uh, the uncertainty about what could happen in a second, third, or uh, wave, um, the ability to be more agile for in your supply chain or in uh, how you how you serve your customers, all of these uh, drivers now are. Uh, if you want to impact these drivers in a serious way and make and 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 
make real change in your organization. There are very few technologies that can do this so quickly. And that's really where, where robotic process automation comes in. I mean, you can implement uh, automations in weeks. You have outcomes are immediate. Uh, you can reinvest those outcomes in the bottom line or in, 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 in R&D in new areas of the business. And because you can add machine learning and AI to those workflows easily and those automations over time, they continue to improve uh, as time goes on. So the outcomes continue to grow as part of this uh, technology. Yeah, so looking at, at, at case studies, this is uh, was the first 21 days actually of, of the crisis. And you can see companies here. Um, the Matter Hospital is the largest hospital in, in Ireland. And there's a, a great story on them that uh, uh, was posted in, in the Wall Street Journal uh, and on the BBC, where they talked about, look, our nurses were struggling to be able to serve all their, all their patients. They had too much data entry to do, entering data in different systems. And with robots, they were able to implement and reduce you know, three to four hours um, a, a day in data entry. So you can imagine the degree which the which nurses were happy because what they want to do is they want to serve their their patients, right? And that uh, was transformative at the hospital level. Or you look at the contact centers at you know at, uh, United Airlines, you know, or Amazon trying to staff and hire. In this case, using robots in in in, H, in HR. All of these are examples of how uh, deploying robots and in, in, in automations can dramatically make changes and impacts that matter, things around accelerating clinical trials, whether it's Regeneron here, for example, or uh, we just did a webinar with Takeda Pharmaceutical uh, where they said the exact same the exact same, uh, exact same, same benefits, being able to cut down the, the, the clinical testing uh, process by a third or a half due to automation. And this is an example of the Wall Street Journal. We're now getting coverage of this technology in the, you know, in the mainstream business, like I mentioned CNN uh, uh, live earlier today, Here's the journals, uh, you know, the homepage of, of, of the journal calling all robots, businesses automate the battle against coronavirus. So what's really happening in this next normal then, right, is, is this sense of urgency is gonna, gonna continue. I think this quote from McKinsey says it best, and I'll read this one and not the others, but if the pace of the pre-coronavirus world was already fast, the luxury of time now seems to have disappeared completely. Businesses that once mapped digital strategy in one to three year phases must now scale their initiatives in a matter of days or weeks. And that's why we use this phrase, it's time to automate, right? This sense of urgency. Um, there was one customer of ours out of Florida, uh, World Fuel Services, their Fortune 100. They actually added uh, this year to their board of directors, uh, a lady that came from EY, who was an expert in robotic process automation technology uh, within her firm. And the on their earnings call uh, in March, they actually said, the CEO actually said, we wanted to bring someone in with this technology experience at the board level, right? So what's happening here is automation and, and in particular robotic process automation and AI now are really becoming C-level priorities. They're becoming boardroom issues, and and they're actually it's actually this technology is delivering on the 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 outcomes that 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 people need, and they want. Time to value is the, is, the, is the outcome I want to be here over and over and over and over. I don't want projects that are, you know, six months or a year out to return outcomes, right? Or two years, you know, God forbid. We want them in in in. Uh, we want those those outcomes in days or weeks. So we have examples now of customers um, like a large electronics manufacturer, Schneider Electric, um, that was able to get their plants faster um, online faster by using robots to automate the availability of PPE. Um, personal protective equipment at each of their manufacturing plants. So what happened here, sometimes people often say, wow, is automation gonna take jobs? And yes, automation's involved in, in, the, in the shift of the workforce um, and we're involved in the skilling and the upskilling and the reskilling of, of the workforce. Um, but, but the reality is that automation has a lot of impacts. It actually helps make a, a workforce more productive. And in this case, actually get workers back to work quicker, right? This saves jobs, this restarts revenue. And this is the kind of thinking that, that the companies are having, you know, uh, uh, worldwide with this technology. Another one is a specialty retailer and franchise. This one targets actually uh, older people. These are their stores are in 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 shopping centers all around um, the U.S. Uh, and the reality was they wanted to get their retail their stores back and operating, but in a way that not only was there to make help their employees feel safer, but that their customers feel safer as well, right? So. They use a uh, health screening technology. We have a health screening robot that's available in our marketplace. That data is pulled together. The company company wide can see every every morning, or when workers come in, the status of their workers. 
um, and they can then tell their, their their customers that we have this program in place that we're um, you know anyone who, who doesn't meet certain health criteria you know they're they're they're, they're they'll stay home if they don't come in for a few days we'll check on them it's really a great thing for employees in this case and it's a really great thing for customers and it's helped them get back to business you know much quicker so you know a proper automation program you know it needs to deliver on uh, deliver an enterprise-wide continuous competitive advantage and, and this is um, a slide that you know I like to talk about a bit because it's 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 relevant on a couple of axes right one is um, the uh, requirement for talent resource talent and the other is the impact on business and like I mentioned earlier, there are impacts in some cases on on certain roles, and I, you know it would be dishonest to say that doesn't that, that's not happening. But what's really happening on scale, or what we see from our customers who talk openly about these projects in a very high scale way, is that employee engagement, employee excitement, employee employee productivity is actually um, is actually what has uh, evolved and what's actually uh, resulted in the use of robots working alongside of humans. I, I don't think I have it in my slide deck, but I'm, I'm encouraged uh, very much by a hackathon that was run over a weekend led by the CEO and the chief digital officer at Singtel, which is the large telecom uh, company in, in Singapore. And they did this hackathon with their existing employees. They said, okay, let's find these ideas of where we can automate to solve, you know, problems that you might have that are repetitive, mundane, and, and generally, you know, uh, you know, in the way of you being able to do, you know, you, you know, be creative. And the winner of the hackathon, she had been at Singtel for 43 years. A 43-year employee of Singtel won the hackathon, and she was able to automate over that weekend something that took her three hours a week, right, for years, right? And it was just a, an easy example of how her life is, is, is better. It's better for, for Singtel. It's better for their, their customers. And so you begin to see that that the that the results are 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 you know very positive on the workers. But the reality is, with automation, over time, as you get greater speed, you scale up your ability to, to invest in new capabilities. Um, you deliver higher quality, a higher customer experience. I mean, just look at chatbots today. You know, the chatbots that matter are the ones that give you a compelling response when you go to engage them. Right? The chatbots that we've all engaged for the last you know five, few years typically. They let us down, but they're getting better. And the reality behind almost every chatbot you engage with that's working well is there are robots that run to different systems to get the answers for, for you, to give you a better, more personalized experience, that goes and gets your, your billing data or goes and gets your information out of a, a customer system. Or, you know, that's that's um, the reality of how the quality of engagement and customer experience is being improved as an, as, as an example. And over time, your business then is able to adapt faster, do, you know, integrating new businesses faster, find new ways to serve customers better. And so this is kind of what we see um, along the kind of uh, continuum of the five areas of, of automation impact. And I probably should source this. I believe this is um, from this graph is from EY. An example I wanted to show, um, and this is how substantial the returns are. I, I think if there's anything on this call, it's important because everybody who's here is interested in business transformation. You know, you're not interested in just doing small things. You want to deliver real substantial ROI, you know, to really help transform a, a, an organization. You know, on average, a dollar invested in UI path returns $15 in year one. And there are many examples of it returning $25 uh, or, or more. And what happens is companies are building millions of hours of digital workforce capacity. They're delivering productivity gains on a per, per employee basis. You know, they're transferring long, long running workflows and processes. And these ultimately translate into uh, uh, you know more revenue and higher customer experience. One of our one of our telecom customers out of Canada recently said that you know within the first four months of deploying automations within their uh, dispatch uh, dispatch area of their of their workforce, they were able to they were able to average the increase the average number of visits or trips that a dispatch worker goes to a premise to a residence or or to a to a commercial uh, account from seven to eight. Now imagine what that could mean in terms of being able to serve more customers, doing that with, with you know, with uh, more customers on a single day with the same number of employees, you know, it's higher customer satisfaction. And that's just the beginning. They have all of these plans on how they're going to be able to enhance the experience, um, you know, of, of uh, but that was the quick return. On the right side here, this is a large U.S.-based energy company from the South that, um, 
has been doing RPA for a while. A lot of early adopters really started you know, testing RPA in, in 2016, 2017, and they've been able to build real big, real large centers of excellence that span the world. Um, they're now building uh, using automation to, to impact major processes. And so they had this one workflow process that they, they highlighted uh, recently in a webinar saying, it was an automated complex processing for drilling new oil wells that involved many systems, human approvals and exception handling. Their, IT, their team was able to deliver automations to revolutionize this workflow in five weeks, which you never hear of in traditional IT. And the business model expectation now at this energy company is that every new robot they deploy, and there's two fundamental kinds of robots, one called an attended robot that sits on a desktop and works with you personally, and an unattended robot that sits in the cloud and you know integrate and, and, and runs processes for you maybe all day or overnight or others. Um, they believe in their calculation that every single attended robot gives them at least $3 million of ROI per year. And you can imagine attended robots being throughout a contact center, for example, and every unattended robot, which handles more complex processes, uh, giving them $10 million in, 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 in returns over three years. You know, companies have hundreds and thousands of robots, right? We have some that have almost 100,000 robots. Imagine what that return really is. We now have early adopters from 2016 and 17. They're talking about $200 million in ROI they're getting this year from the digital transformation led by, by robotic process automation. And that is real. It's, it's tremendous. And it's, 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 uh, and it's proven now. And the examples go on and on. I won't go into to, to, to all the details. I've given you, I've given you, you know, many examples. But, but you know, the reality here again is we're no longer in proof point. This is not about POCs. If you haven't started your RPA program and thought about hyper automation, which is the larger category term um, uh, for for end to end automation, if you haven't started, you're behind. And you know, you don't want to just go do a few points for proof of concepts now. What you really need to do is leverage the best practices we've already learned from companies across every industry. And you need to go put in place then, you know, a center of excellence. You need to get the CFO and controller um, and the CIO together um, and, and head of shared services and pull them together and begin to put together a plan for, for, for you know, to uh, get you on your journey and get you get you farther down the, the path fast. Because if you're not doing this, your, your, your competitors are. And we're up to almost 68% of the global Fortune 500. So you can imagine you know that uh, of the penetration that exists. As I said, we have over 7,000 customers, and I should have mentioned earlier, we're adding 10 new enterprise customers now a day. We have a lot of ways to to help you think about um, automation across your entire enterprise. So again, thanks to you know now a few years of proof points, customers that have gone enterprise wide, um, and a lot of analysis and tools that we have in place, we can actually help you figure out within your within your functions within your company. What should be the overall potential from automation? I mean, the, the goal here really should be, you know, how can you become a fully inter fully automated enterprise faster than your competitors? That's That's gotta be the top, top end goal. I hear now from C-level executives that there's a race now. And we often use terms like digital transformation, but the, to be very clear about it, that, you know, that's a very vague and broad term that's been used for years now, right? I'm probably going on seven or eight years. Um, you know, what they really want to do is they want to become a fully automated enterprise fast. So you look across your organization. This is an example of a Canadian telecom company from the results that we did in value, our value engineering organization. And you can see the substantial amount of automation potential, both in the first year in green and total potential in, in red. So certainly some organizations like finance the ability to transform finance is substantial with RPA, and that's actually where RPA and 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 hyper automation started first. It was really in 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 finance because there's so many you know uh, manual run, Monday kind of repetitive tasks at the end of the month month end close or at the end of the quarter quarter end close. So um, you know one one CFO of a Fortune 10 told us um, she said if I have any employees in my finance organization that are not doing data driven analytics. That's RPA. That's hyper automation. And that's how significant you have to think about about uh, the trans the transformation. Though today, uh, uh, back office opportunities are substantial. The front office is really where you, where we're seeing the, the the rapid growth now around the customer experience side, customer service side, uh, customer engagement side, uh, field workers, retail workers engaging with robots uh, as part of being able to serve their customers better.
So how is it all coming together? I told you RPA you know, was not well known in, in 2016, 2017, but the early adopters uh, were the ones that really jumped into it. Um, it's now a, a mainstream term, term as evidenced by you know, CNN covering it this morning. Um, it's got, you know, our, we've got our Gartner Magic Quadrants and our Forrester Waves and others that, that, that cover RPA. But what, 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 you, what we are focused on at UiPath is a much broader, a, a broader capability set that can help you really achieve kind of the success in end-to-end -end automation. And end-to-end -end automation involves thinking about how you can apply AI and machine learning. It involves API integration, not just UI automation, user interface automation, which you do through through RPA. It involves the ability to tie the discovery of processes to automate, score them, mine them, uh, record them, and feed that into implementation, uh, you know, to speed implementation. And then they actually take the analytics then and say, how are my robots performing, you know, every day? And what's the business value? And did I did I meet my goals? And that end-to-end -end platform for for uh, for uh, automation, we call hyper automation. It's actually a Gartner term as well. We both uh, came out with it last October. Hyper is a very important and relevant term because it's about time to value. And I think if anything is critical right now um, and evidenced by, co by, by in COVID and after COVID is the need of which to focus on on speed and, 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 and you know, days and weeks to, to, to get value, you know, not months and years as we discussed earlier. So this platform as a whole, comes together and it it becomes uh, the ability to help you become a true fully automated enterprise. What's also amazing about RPA is that once you have that workflow automated, right, and you have that first outcome of being able to have the robot do work instead of the, the human do that work for you and free up that, that, that worker, is that you can then think about the profound potential of AI actually impacting that, that process. You know, one of the best paths or probably the best path to AI in your business operations is actually going to be through RPA because that's where the digital data is and that's where the automation exists. And so we've made it very easy to actually drag and drop and put AI um, into a workflow. But essentially, this is you know this is not a surprise to anyone, right? This kind of evolution of the PC first era, web first, mobile first, cloud first, and 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 now we're talking about um, AI first, right? And so. Being able to think about algorithms and digital data growth and computing power at massive scales, you know, that's what you know this this set of technology is able to achieve for you very fast. And so, um, you know, what you want to think about in you know RPA is, hey, how do I emulate my humans, my workers, take away the, the, those mundane and repetitive tasks, free them up to do things more creative, help them make stronger decisions. And generally, these are rules-based tasks. You know, these are rules that what you do and if you're in a call center and you get a, an email from a from a customer, generally follow rules on how they respond to that customer, and it might take, you know, uh, a day or two or or, or longer. Um, task management, structured data, you know, kind of definitive tasks are part of what where of, 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 of where the sweet spot of RPA is. But when you begin to combine and we combined AI into the RP our hyper automation platform and, and combined AI to be able to be a part of the robotic process. You then began to look at documents that are unstructured, you know, looking at handwriting, looking at emails, determining context in an email. Wow, is this customer really upset or marginally upset? You know, that those technologies now have been, have been uh, those kinds of capabilities now are embedded into our platform. Or you might say, well, I'm in say the insurance industry and I wanna apply, you know, claims uh, AIs from these really great uh, companies or, or system integrators. You know, they've got these data scientists. How do I apply their machine learning models you know, to my workflow. Well, now it's really easy. You essentially basically upload the the work the the uh, model into uh, UiPath. It becomes a skill. You drag and drop that skill into a workflow, and voila, you're now turning a rules-based process into an experience-based process. You're now actually improving the ability to make a decision better based on data and experience over time. You're able to look at things that are unstructured, or images, or pictures, and um, and determine. Uh, uh, you know, context of those, right? So now you're assisting humans with thinking, uh, helping them with comp complex tasks, pattern recognition, uh, and like I said, unstructured and semi-structured data. So this is what we're pulling together all in our single platform uh, for for hyper automation. So to simplify it, if you don't know how the platform works, there are there are three core components to the platform, and you can download this platform for free 
on uipath.com. We've done this for years. We have a full community on there. You can get trained, you can get certified based on your role. If you've got employees perhaps that you wanna go say, hey, spend the weekend, go learn how to use UiPath. Really, it is, it is that easy with the training online, all free, the ability to download the software, um, you know, they, you know, we have customers that started off, you know, with two employees over a weekend who solved the problem with, 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 with um, UiPath and they were the biggest hit, and the biggest, you know, uh, the, the biggest hit in their company, you know, in a week. So that's, that makes this platform great. Studio is a design tool and we've got multiple versions of Studio based on if you're a, a RPA developer or a citizen developer, perhaps you don't know concepts like variables, for example, so it's a simpler platform to automate and a professional version now actually that includes test automation. So you can actually give the more sophisticated developers a, a much more robust um, uh, end to end RPA plus test automation suite. Orchestrator is the brains. Once you've built your automation studio, you put it into Orchestrator, you publish it to Orchestrator, that's either in the cloud or, or you can run that uh, uh, yourself. Uh, and with Orchestrator, then you can manage that and it actually triggers and schedules robots to run that automation, and then it provides the audit trail and the security and the credential management, all the things to ensure that the robot worker is 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 secure, that it is uh, you know using the right credentials, that everything's audited. One of the things that chief compliance officers love about our technology is that everything's audited. There's no question, and robots do the same exact thing every time, right? You know, there, there there's no such thing as a rogue robot, right? So these are the three key components of the platform that we introduced over the last few years. Today, the platform is much, much larger. As I mentioned earlier, we're now uh, investing in a platform for end-to-end -end hyper automation, that ability to help you help business analysts within your company discover the processes. We have a tool called Automation Hub uh, that is awesome, that allows all of your employees to submit automation ideas, score them, and, and it becomes, it gamifies the ability to find ideas to help drive productivity in your organization and free up, free up workers. Then there's tools like process mining that will look at processes and find bottlenecks and will look at the logs of an SAP or salesforce.com or watch what's going on, on on a keyboard and figure out kind of what where in that process are the bottlenecks that can drive real real ROI. Tools that actually will record and capture the task being performed and turn that into a, a process definition document or PDD and turn that into a SAML file at XAML, which feeds our technology and speeds the ability to, to implement an automation you know, for, for an employee. I, I mentioned multiple versions of Studio, our design tech, our designer, uh, the ability to manage the uh, the, the uh, automations with our orchestrator technology and the ability to add ML models through our AI fabric um, and the ability to do all that in the cloud with our automation cloud, which you could do today. I, Chipotle was a great example of one that wanted to get started right away. They went to UiPath Automation Cloud and in two weeks, their company had automations flowing uh, that were making them more productive. Uh, different kinds of robots I mentioned attended and unattended earlier. There are also AI robots that execute um, uh, ML models on GPUs and testing robots that actually provide the testing of automations in a very efficient way. Um, there's technologies now that help engage a, a workforce. So uh, we now, you know, now we, our goal is to help again a vision of a robot for every person. So if you're a dispatch worker and if you have dispatch workers or you have retail workers. Uh, or line workers, they can engage and interact with robots. They may not know their robots are doing their work for them, but they can engage with them. And robots now can stop a process, engage a, a worker anywhere, get the answer back, and continue that process for you. So, very sophisticated platform for, you know, for complex process automation is what's also unfolding. And then insights is is the customized dashboard that you know in real time all the ROI um, that's being returned by all of your robotic operations. And I mentioned on the AI front, just to show you, in those phases of discovering processes, in the phases of helping you manage, build and manage, these are examples of where AI has been embedded in our technology sets to help solve, you know, in the case of scientifically identifying automation uh, to, to, to automate, right? So feed the pipeline of automation. That's one of the most important goals of a center of excellence, um, of your automation center of excellence. Teaching the robots new AI skills, right? Whether you upload a custom AI skill, like the insurance example I gave you, or one around conversational understanding or, or being able to look at certain kinds of document types. Um, and then you're know, applying those, uh, those, those AI algorithms and models at, at, at scale. I mentioned Automation Hub. This is a great one to go look on, online if you're kind of uh, intrigued by the idea of having every one of your workers in your company be able to submit ideas. Um, Automation Hub is an amazing you know, cloud-based uh, application 
where all the ideas can be submitted, where an employee can download a capture tool and record what they're doing. Um, it's really funny. Gamify is some of our largest customers, um, like Microsoft, are huge users of, 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 of Automation Hub. And finally, I just wanted to show you an example. I mentioned earlier that it's that that um, UiPath can be used in really any any function um, and and obviously any in, any industry. Here's just an example in HR uh, where you're trying to streamline recruiting. Maybe you're trying to accelerate onboarding because you're a, a retailer and fast moving consumer goods, uh, like I mentioned earlier with Amazon uh, or Walmart, um, and you're looking to improve the processes uh, to help with onboarding, right? To uh, and and improve your process of how you serve your your employees. Um, and you want to then obviously manage the the ability to, uh, to to manage your workforce. And these are these are outcomes that actually came out of uh, one of the companies that I mentioned. You know, just by deploying robots in the HR function, a six x increase in throughput for recruiting. Uh, robots actually can look at the resumes, and find the, the and sort through resumes, find the ones that matter, and it can go check LinkedIn. They can do all kinds of validations to make sure the resumes are accurate from different sources, uh, third party or internal. Um, the onboarding speed, a new employee comes on. This is really great. You all know this. When, you enter, when you're a new employee, you're entering same data in multiple places. And often there's an error in one of those places. Robots can do the onboarding for you, take all the data, all your data once, put them in all the right systems, manage all that. We've, been, uh, we've seen outcomes where onboarding processes have been sped up by 80%. Obviously, reducing exceptions and errors is critical in throttling and managing Resources. Look, we can't stress that the post-crisis reality. You know, speed to transform is the is of essence, is of the essence. Um, and you know, if you're a company right now in HR where you are, in a business where you your HR organization is stressed by, you know, new the realities of post-COVID, this is an example of how automations can can delight and 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 thrill a chief human resources officer. So that's my my uh, presentation. Hopefully, that was gave you a full inspiring viewpoint on this amazing technology that will both transform your company, but also transform your workforce and delight your workforce. And uh, Jose, I'll, I'll head it back to you. Bobby, this was uh, fascinating. What a, what a great comprehensive view of, of, of the market, of the opportunities and the, the work that you all have been doing. Uh, you know, a bit of context on my own personal experience. I was uh, in 2016, I was leading a global uh, uh, program for a uh, energy company and at that point we we're just playing around with RPA you know a bit more like small bullets that before we fire the cannonballs and uh, and as you mentioned today you know those those programs at scale with hundreds of applications um, so thank you for for such a comprehensive view um, one, one of the first questions that I have is uh, what what have you seen in the marketplace in the next I was going to say the next 12 months, but because the last six months have been so intense, um, I, I'm, I'm curious about what developments you have seen in the marketplace uh, from an RPA um, implementation standpoint, other than the speed, yeah. uh, with the technology itself. Uh, what, what has what has uh, changed most significantly in your view? Well, I think the technology is, has 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 democratized uh, the ability to have more and more people part of the automation process, right? And I think that's you know when you can open that up, citizen development's a term. And I was on a call just prior to this one with uh, a large organization, and 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 their IT organization wants to democratize automation and open it up to all their employees in a secure, governed way. Well, now the technologies are, exist where it's easier for somebody who knows Excel perhaps now to create an automation. You don't have to really be a programmer. So the democratization, I think, has really made it uh, opened it up. I think our investments in the discovery side of 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 RPA has been key because finding the processes to automate, scoring them. You know, the, the first question a a, a, a company a, C, a CEO will ask us if they're just getting introduced to RPA is, okay, what process do I do first? And that answer is not. It's you know, there's no stock answer. That every company does things a little bit differently. We know functions can all benefit dramatically, but what you really want to be able to do is to be able to prioritize and identify those 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 automations with the greatest potential. I always say find the highest impact, lowest risk ones that make you a hero fast. And that's, I think now the tools are in place to really help people do that in a much more, you know, broad way. Terrific, terrific. Uh, Danny Reichardt has a question here. Um, he says, actually, hey, Bob, it's Danny from ITP. Maybe you know Danny. Uh, can you speak to how RPA runs best in an agile environment and why even though digital transformation is something that has been around for a long time, uh, it has evolved and that has forced the RPA process to engage with citizen use 
in order yeah. to force the automation first mindset in the digital transformation mindset. Um, so tell us a little bit about, yeah. about ha, ha, how that has happened in, a, in an agile environment. Yeah, thanks, Denny. I uh, use some terms in there that I think, you know, we like automation first. Uh, so you clearly, you, you know, the space well. I, look, I think what's underestimated, and this is, it's kind of funny to me because, you know, Microsoft goes and buys a small company in the space. Appian bought a small company uh, in the space. Uh, SAP bought a small company in the space. And they, they, they continuously underestimate the, the, what the secret fundamental key requirement is of of hyper automation and that is ui automation that ability for a robot to look at a screen and interact i mean you know this is a human you can interact with different systems and you can understand if things change or move and you can understand how to interact with a mainframe system or with an excel spreadsheet or you know but but for a robot to look at a screen where the screen elements are all very different and do that with 100 percent reliability and resiliency and to do that in a very scalable fashion to do that in a way that you may not know this, but the robots, you can work on your machine and the robots running process, doing the same thing on your machine and not interfering with your typing. Like that kind of technology to do that really well at scale is really hard. And I think that's what is constantly underestimated by a number of the traditional uh, vendors who tried to enter this space. And it's the technology that, you know, has, has made it so that it's actually you know, dependable and reliable to use and 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 very, and you know, for a robot to be able to open an, an email up, you know, then go into a spreadsheet, then log into salesforce.com, then maybe log into one of your, your legacy systems and run all that entire process for you completely accurately in a way, even if things change, smart enough to know, oh, wow, first name and last name, it actually got moved to this this area. Okay, no problem, it still, it still runs. So you have many, you know, much far fewer errors because that's where the AI kicks in. I think when that technology was kind of perfected over the last 24 months, that's what really enabled this to, to, to take off. But again, um, when you think about the areas of, of, of automation and, and integration and, and call it what you will, intelligent automation or hyper automation, right? The, the, the key technology that most that is most needed for success uh, is and will always be the, the UI automation part. The other parts like AI, API integration, that's a very important part of the platform, but that's not rocket science. UI automation actually is rocket science. Yeah, and, and Bobby, tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, you mentioned this during your presentation that uh, uh, I agree with you. If you're not already doing RPA, you're behind. Uh, and uh, so for those who are a bit late in the game um, and they're coming in at this stage, what is the strategy for them? What 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 is the best way of getting that buying in the company? But most important, uh, what they can do now that uh, may be different from the implementation three years ago. Uh, how do yeah. they get started in a very effective way? It's a great question, and I think you know in 2017, 2018, a lot of the success was grassroots, meaning bottoms up. You would have some area of a finance organization or con, you know a controller would drive and say, I got I've got to do something differently. I've got to transform and this is the only way I can do it, right? And so they kind of drove it grassroots. But now what we're seeing, and I, I just, they just, uh, we just uh, signed a retailer uh, that was more of a, I guess, more of a laggard on, on the East Coast, more of a laggard in adopting. Um, and uh, I was a part of this one, and they, they brought CEO, CFO, controller, and um, exper chief experience officer, customer experience officer, all to the table. And, and now it's top level, top down driven, right? And when it's top-down driven and you and it's you know it's C-level driven, you think about things in a much bigger way. You think about um, so we we have these now value engineers, and we have this ability to go in and tell people, tell people and with our partners, you know, like an Accenture or EY or Deloitte or others, we can go in and have that full conversation about what what you know. Here's how you much you should invest. Don't just do a proof of concept anymore. That takes too long. Here's the minimal amount you need to invest. Here are the tools and pieces you need. Okay, here's a timeline that makes sense. Here's what you have to do as a C-level. Um, to, to drive this. And I, you know, I think that's, you know, the good thing is we know all those pieces right now. The key is for this, you know, the C levels to have that, that automation first mindset that was mentioned by Denny earlier, you have that mindset in place and it gets exciting. And like I mentioned earlier to have, you know, force 100 company at, at a board member because she provided RPA experience. When those CEOs recognize that the results are, are transformational to a company. So, uh, I think it's it's you know, and we can help with that now. I mean, now fortunately, the pandemic has 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 caused this and accelerated. You know, it's not a surprise to anyone that we talk to now that this is 
a sea level uh, discussion. That the biggest challenge people have is you you got to demystify a bit. You know, Microsoft buying a small little company, um, you know that that is 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 subscale doesn't mean that suddenly they can give you a hyper automation platform. And Microsoft's a great company; they're a partner and a customer. But it's important to, to you know you want to go with a platform that can get you know time to value is, the, is 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 key here. And you don't your your digital transformation can't wait a year, two years, or three years now. And so. Unfortunately, we've got 3,000 uh, employees, you know, all around the world, and and they would be happy to help help uh, drive that conversation. Bobby, congratulations on on the on the success of the company, the phenomenal growth you have experienced, and there there are some good reasons behind that. Uh, last uh, big tip here for for our audience: uh, where is the best place that they can go to to learn more, to maybe get some training? You mentioned some of these resources during your presentation. Where is the go-to place that they can go to right now? Uh, to learn more about uh, about not only the the application but also deployment and and uh, and uh, and get in touch with the company. The, the best place is UiPath Academy. If you just want to do a Google search and go straight there, and that's the easiest. That's you know there are millions of people who've gone through our academy who certified. It's role based too, so maybe for different roles, you can learn. You can watch videos. You can learn. You can get certified. There's advanced tracks, but uh, you know that's a great way for somebody to to re really learn. There's a whole community that you can engage. Uh, all of this is, is democratized, no cost and, and, and free. And certainly, if you go to our website and you hit the contact us form, we generally respond uh, in you know a matter of a couple of hours. And and uh, it's amazing. We get you know hundreds of thousands of new visitors a, a month. And so the popularity of our site is is tremendous. And I should probably close also. One thing that's exciting to me is is the universities are adopting this technology. When, when you, uh, I live in the Washington DC area, there are four major universities in the area, University of Maryland, George Mason, Virginia Tech, and, and William and & Mary. All of them, their business schools are deploying this technology to their students. When their students graduate from business schools over the next two years, the most important tool that they will come to the workforce with is not Excel, it's not SQL Server anymore, it's RPA and, and UiPath. And, you know, that, and they're using the same academies as well. So everybody, it's open to everybody. This is fantastic. In a time that where so many are looking for upskilling themselves, uh, but this is a tremendous resource. Bobby, so grateful to have you join your join us and share your insights and expertise on the technology, on the industry, on the cultural aspects of implementation. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Jose. It's great to be here. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Bobby Patrick from UiPath. Terrific presentation, great insights, great resources for each one of us to go learn more, uh, upskill ourselves during a time of rapid change in the marketplace for organizations and professionals alike. So I'm, um, we're going to close this segment now and we're going to start back up with the last segment of the day. And in the last segment of the day, we're going to have log me in talking about the dividends of empathy and value of change management towards the future of work. So you do not want to miss our last session today. I'll see you back at the top of the hour.